joined us. He's going to read over his game notes real quick. Get as prepared as you guys always are. Yeah, yeah. Got to check everything out. <laughs> All right. Go ahead and raise your hand if you have a question for Cade, and we will get it started uh, with uh, Jacob Unruh from the Oklahoma. And go ahead, Jacob. Cade, how's it going today? I'm good. How you doing? Doing well. Doing well. Hey, your first Bedlam. I think we might have asked you this before. We thought you were going to play the first time in Bedlam, but uh, what do you know about Bedlam and uh, and the rivalry? Uh, I know it's you know it's something that means a whole lot to everybody around here. Um, you know, it's it's even being you know an Arlington kid. You know, I hear about Oklahoma State, Oklahoma rivalry a bunch. So um, I know it's a big game. I know there's going to be a lot of emotions. Uh, but it's going to be fun, though. Something that, you know, everybody's going to want to compete in and, and want to win. You know, there's a lot of bragging rights in the game. So it'll be fun for sure. Uh, one, one thing that stood out to me lately is it seems like there's some talk and chatter outside of it's Cade and everybody else on this team. Um, I don't agree with it. I'm sure you don't agree with it. Um, but when you see the way your teammates responded with you on the bench in foul trouble the other night, does that kind of negate that thought? Do you, what do you think of that? Yeah, I mean – I know how much attention, you know, I bring, but, um, you know, I always feel like my teammates don't get enough credit for, you know, what they do on the court and, and you know, just in the locker room. Like, like I know that they're appreciative of me, but I don't think maybe I could do a better job of, of letting them know how much I appreciate them just because, you know, they bring it every day and they, they've made me so much better throughout the year that, you know what I'm saying? I know I wouldn't be where I am right now if it wasn't for them. So um, I try to deflect, you know, that attention as much as I can. Uh, you know, I wish more, you know, ESPN interviews were for them. You know, I wish I wish they, they could kind of get the spotlight that I feel like a lot of times they deserve. But, um, you know, they they use it as fuel and, and, you know, I appreciate them for that for sure. Do you use that as fuel too? Like, because I know you, 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 you intend to get your teammates involved more. And so do you use that as fuel as well? Definitely, definitely. I mean, I know, like you, like I said, I know how much attention I bring game plan wise too. So I know I have weapons around me and, you know, anytime that I can get them going, you know, getting them good shots early on, I feel like that help us down the stretch of games. You know, if they do send a double team and I'm passing to somebody that's already shot a couple in the game. So, you know, we're all a team. There's no one man above the group. So, you know, I try to play like that. And, and not a lot of guys have five teammates that are averaging nine points or more. Yeah, we, we, we're proud of that, for sure. We're proud of that. Everybody, I mean, we have so many different weapons. If we could get everybody clicking at once, I think we'll be super deadly. But the fact that we always find a way to compete just because we have a bunch of guys that just go out there and hoop, you know, I think that says a lot about us and about Coach Mike for, you know, giving us all that type of confidence. And, and I got to ask about Avery. The way Avery's played lately, you talking about teammates here. What's really kind of stood out to you about the way Avery's grown this season? I think he's, I mean, I've known Avery since for, I don't, I don't know how long. I've seen him play for forever. I've played with him and against him in camps, things like that. But he always had the ability. I think now he's just, you know, he's playing a lot more free. He's playing with a ton of confidence. Um, and he's not thinking as much. You know, it's, it's so natural for him. Um, and I think now he's kind of just letting his field take over instead of trying to overthink the game and, and force things to happen. So, uh, I mean, he's helped us out so much. He's about to, took a lot of pressure off, you know, everybody else on the team. So, you know, we're going to try to keep him going. And, and he's been practicing great. You know, he's one of those dudes. He He's in the he's in the gym at 6 a.m. He's working. So, um, you know, I have nothing but confidence when, he, when the ball's in his hands. I know he's going to make shots and things like that because he cares and he works hard. Awesome. Thanks, Kate. Yeah. Next question is from Cliff with the Associated Press. Go ahead, Cliff. Run. Hey, uh, Kate, how you doing? I'm good. How you doing? I'm good. Hey, uh, just a few quick things. Firstly, how have you handled the process of learning when to attack and uh, when to look for your teammates? It seems like it's a it's a process that you've grown in over the course of the year. Can you talk a little bit about that and just where you are with it at this point? Yeah, I think I think earlier on in the year, um, whenever I felt like it was my turn, I would kind of force it a little bit more um, and kind of force my looks, especially if I had been passive earlier. But I think now, you know, after after some time um, and just you know building chemistry with with the team, 
uh, getting more comfortable on the court and things like that. I feel like now it's just more, you know, what I see each play. You know, I feel like I'm playing with more pure intentions of, you know, just trying to find the right play. Whereas earlier I was kind of predetermining things probably in my head um, a little more than I needed to. So, uh, yeah, I think that's the biggest thing, you know, just attacking what the defense gives. Um, I definitely, you know, want my teammates involved throughout the game. I'm not one of those guys that, you know, I don't try to I don't try to force my own numbers just because that's what, you know, fans want to see or anything like that. I'm trying to win games. So, um, you know, I feel like we've, we've won a bunch of games this year. A couple of them slipped away from us. But, you know, I feel like if I just go out there to win every game, we're going to give ourselves a better shot. So, yeah, I'm not too worried about my numbers. I think, you know, I've had decent numbers, but not to worry about that. I feel like when my teammates are playing well, that's when we're at our best. And then if you could help us understand what makes Coach Boyton a good coach? I think that's one of the biggest things is he he doesn't take confidence away from anybody. Like, he's so worried. He just wants you to play as hard as you can and defend. He's, he, he cares about defense, you know, the things that don't really take talent. He cares about all those things because those are things that everybody can control. So... You know, I think having a coach like that, that's going to, you know, he's going to give you structure on offense. He's going to, you know, let you know what's a good shot, what's a bad shot, things like that. But but that's going to, you know, let you be you at the same time. You know, I feel like that's why we all like playing for him, and that's why it's so easy to play for him, just because, you know, you want to play hard for somebody like that. That's not going to, you know, restrict you as a player. So, you know, I think that's one of the things that, you know, you don't really find too often. Maybe it's because he's younger. Maybe, you know, who knows, but. Just the way that he relates to us all, it's easy for us to, you know, read the game from his eyes, and he translates basketball so easy to us. So, yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, we've had a, a pretty good year, but it all starts with him for sure. Uh, last thing, how did you, how do you deflect all the the NBA hype? Everybody wants to talk about what you're going to do. How have how, how have you been able to focus on the right now with what everybody's saying? I think mainly because I'm not in the NBA yet. No, I'm not. I'm not getting paid by any team. I'm not, you know, under my rights as a player or not under any team. Um, you know, I'm an OSU Cowboy, so that's what I'm worried about. You know, I don't. I'm not in their locker rooms in the NBA or anything. You know, I'm. I'm with my team now every day, um, trying to get better with them. So, you know, I'm not. I'm not going to be a foot out the door. If I still want to win games, I still love being around my teammates now. Like, I wish it, I wish it could last forever, but, you know what I'm saying, everybody goes on their own different path. But the team I have right now, you know, I already had previous relationships with a bunch of them, but, you know, since, it's been, since I've been here, it's only been, you know, better than what I expected. So, um, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy where I'm at, and I want to finish strong. I'm trying to finish where I started. Appreciate you. Yeah. The communications guy like me, I don't blame him. Uh, next question, uh, Dean Rule. Hey, Kate, how you doing? Oh, great. How you doing? I'm doing good. Uh, I remember reading earlier, kind of right before the season started, that you had switched over to a vegan diet. How has that kind of worked out for you this season? Yeah, I started. I started vegan. Um, probably going into. Before my Team USA, which was, I mean, I started probably almost around two years ago now. Um, and I started off with vegan. And I don't know how I just jumped straight into it, but I felt great. Uh, you know, I think it was just more like a try it out thing and, and see if, you know, it lives up to the hype. And uh, it was great for me. And I went to my bird, wasn't as many options um, eating wise out there in my bird. So I went vegetarian. And so now, since then, I've just kind of been back and forth between vegetarian and vegan. But, um, you know, I think it's been something that's, you know, it's become a routine for me, and it's something I'm really comfortable with now. So I don't, I don't see myself really switching back anytime soon, honestly. There's no there's no temptation being around the other guys eating chicken and steak? I mean, early on it was, but now I'm at the point where I don't even – I don't really even look at it like that. I just <laughs> – like, they can have steak, they can have wings, anything by me. I, that's them over there. I don't really look at it like that. That's not really for me anymore. And uh, lastly, if I remember reading correct, it was uh, your brother that got you into it, right? Yeah, yeah. He was the one. He was one of the main ones that, you know, 
I wouldn't say he didn't he didn't make me do it or anything, but he was one of the ones that kind of told me what it was about. And then from there, I just wanted to try it out. So, and you no, know, it worked out pretty well for me. So, he's still he's still vegan. He's still liking it. He loves it. Do the uh, team chefs help you out with getting your diet down? Yeah, yeah. Coach Mike's wife, uh, Miss Jenny, she has a plan for me. Um, Coach Jake, our strength coach. He's on me all the time about, you know, trying to make sure I'm eating right, things like that. So, um, yeah, everybody's – it's all hands on board. Everybody's trying to make sure that we're all right. Hey, thank you, Kate. I appreciate it. Yeah. Next question, Frank Bonner of the Tulsa World. Go ahead, Frank. Hey, Kate, good to see you. Good to see you. Not every school has a rivalry as big as Bedlam. How much extra fun and excitement does Bedlam add to your overall season experience? A bunch, a bunch. You know, I think everybody likes playing. I wouldn't say everybody. I know I like playing when the lights are a little bit brighter. Um, you know, basketball is almost a form of entertainment. And I kind of look at it as myself as almost an entertainer now at this point. Like, it's something that I really love to do. Um, and, you know, when there's more people out there watching, when there's, you know, something else on the line, you know, it only makes it more fun, makes you want to keep all stuff. Um, you know, having a game like this is huge. And for it to be my first time to be able to play in it, um, you know, I definitely want to go in there and respect the game and, you know, compete for, for everybody that, you know, me and my team are representing. So I know there's a lot a lot of people that are, you know, they feel like it's game day for them as well, just because we wear the orange and, and black. So, um, you know, we're going to go in and carry ourselves like that for sure. Now, I talked to some of your former teammates and they talked about how, it doesn't matter if we're talking basketball or whatever, but you seem to be the loudest cheerleader for, for any of your teammates, whether it's ping pong, trivia, or whatever. Where does that joy come from of just, you know, being being so happy and enthusiastic to support other people? Um, I mean, it all starts with the relationship that I built with, with my guys. Like, if I have a connection with you, um, you know, whether we're friends, teammates, you know, somebody I can see my brother, we've been, you know what I'm saying? I want to see you succeed, whether, you know, we're on the same side or not. Um, I mean, I, I know they always say whenever we're scrimmaging and I'm against them, they know, they know I'm against them. They know I'm not on their side at all. So, I mean, I'm competitive. Like, I like, I like to win, but, you know, if you're on my side, I want to see you win. You know, I feel like, you know, there's a lot of shots to be made out here. You know, everybody can, can succeed in their own way. So, uh, yeah, I don't really know. I just like seeing my dogs eat for real. That is, that's that's exactly what they said about being against you. They they said that very thing. Oh uh, yeah, okay, they know that. Yeah. And I told Mike, I told Mike I'd bring this up. He said, um, off the court, you guys are into music, uh, rap battles in the hotel and everything. He said he's a better rapper than you. I told him I would give you the floor to see if that's true or not. Who said that? Mike Miles. He said he a better what than me. He said, "When y'all do y'all freestyle battles, he 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 usually wins. Is is that is that true? You almost about to make me freestyle right now for the you feel me, for the beating, but I ain't even, I don't even want to do it. I'm gonna let Mike Mike have this one, but he knows though. He knows he knows what it, how it go with me. He knows it, he knows so. So I ain't even going. You know what I'm saying? I'm I might have to call him in a minute. You gonna make me call him? I'm gonna get on his head too. Hey, look, I, I told him I'd give you a chance to say your piece. That's all I yeah, got for you. I'm going to give him FaceTime right after this. So. <laughs> I appreciate you, Kate. Yeah, I appreciate you letting me know that. For so, yeah. It's up. Our next question is from Marshall Scott. Go ahead, Marshall. Yeah, I don't know how to how to follow that up. But, uh, Kate, what, what rivalries have you been a part of? Who is Montverde's rival? Who is Bowie's rival? What rivalries have you been a part of so far? Um... For Bowie, uh, Lamar was the rivalry. Um, Arlington Lamar, that's where actually my older sister, my Cannon, he went to Lamar, my mom went to Lamar, and then I went to Bowie. So Lamar is the north side of Arlington, and then me, I was on the south side. So that was a little rivalry uh, my first two years. Um, then I got to Montverde, IMG was a huge rivalry for us. So I played an IMG game a couple times, uh, played Oak Hill. So, I mean, there was a couple of rivalry games. So, like I said, those are always the best games to play in just because you know the other team doesn't like you and we don't like them. So, you know what I'm saying? Anytime you go out there and compete, 
doing something you love, all that stuff. You know, it's more fun and, and there's a, you know, there's just higher stakes. Nobody wants to lose those games. So I'm excited for sure. You mentioned kind of being an entertainer earlier. These are games that Trey Young's played in, Blake Griffin's played in, Marcus Smart's played in. Are you kind of excited for your legacy to now be be laid on this, however this goes? Definitely, definitely. Just to, you know, be able to put my print on this game, um, you know, no matter how it goes, being able to say I've experienced that, you know, and, and played in that game, you know, it's something that, you know, I'm forever going to remember. I'm always going to be able to live with this game. So um, I'm excited, man. I'm really excited for sure. Oh, you didn't offer Rondell or the Boone Twins. Do you kind of get a feeling that this game, from them being Oklahoma, is that this game might mean a little bit more to them? Yeah, and because I didn't know that either. So because of that, you know, I'm, I'm we're going to make sure the whole team knows that. Like, if, if they want – that's almost disrespectful, really. They didn't want to show love to my dogs, then they're not showing love to us. So, yeah, we're going to remember that for sure. We're going to all take that into account. All right. And then I don't know if we'll talk to you before Monday's game, but that will likely be your last game in Gallagher Iba. Kind of what has been your your take from home games? Obviously, it's been a, a weird year with the COVID and the less fans, but what's kind of been your college experience in GIA? Uh, I've loved it. I've loved playing it. You know, I've never really been a fan of home games my whole career until I got here, just because it was it's a different feeling in, in GIA. Like you can ask my dad, anybody. They always used to be like, well, y'all play at home. Now you always say, you know, I'm, I like playing on the road. I like playing on the road more just because, you know, I like when there's people against me. Um, I don't know, but but GIA just had a different feel. Like, I always have fun playing in there. The fans, you can tell the fans appreciate good basketball. Um, and they cheer hard. Like, they, you can tell they, they're just really rooting for it. So, like you said, I wish, you know, everybody got to come out. I wish, you know, we got to fill it up, but. You know, being the last game or, or whatever, you know, I'm going to have fun in it um, and try to make it special for sure. Is it – I don't know if you, like, regret not having – you know, at some, at some point this year, the fans probably would have stormed the court. Is there the, – those little things, do you miss those? Do you Is it sad that you got to miss out on those or do you just kind of move on with it? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, you know, whenever I was being recruited to OSU, uh, you know, that's something that I was imagining. Um, whenever I committed, that's what I imagined was, you know, full full gym, everybody in there locked in, you know, we win, everybody storm the court, all that. So um now that you know that didn't get to happen, you know, we, we're kind of sad about it, but you know, it's been a long time where we got to, you know, kind of try to get over it. And I still feel like, you know, the fans have done a great job of of you know bringing in as many as they can and, and trying to show as much support as possible. So we appreciate it for sure. Appreciate it, Kate. Yeah. And uh, Chris Becker, go ahead. And how are you today? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing good. You know, there's been a lot of talk about cutting the one and uh, one and done rule in the NBA or in the in college. You know, now that you have this year under your belt, you know, kind of what do you, what are your thoughts on that rule? And you know, should high schoolers you know be allowed to go straight to the NBA? Uh. Oh wait. Um, my take on that, I think players should be able to go whenever they're ready, honestly. You know, I feel like if you're good enough to be in the NBA, I feel like a team should be allowed to select you. Um, and I mean, obviously the NBA teams are, you know, they're, they're investing a lot of money into these picks, um, and they do their research. So I feel like with that, they're not going to take somebody out of high school if they don't feel like they're ready. You know what I'm saying? So. Um, yeah, I feel like, you know, if the kid is ready, that must mean that he's special. And I don't feel like you should be able to, I don't feel like you should have to, you know, take him out of being able to, you know, go make money for his family. Um, and, you know, play at the highest level if, you know what I'm saying, if he's ready. So I don't, you know what I'm saying? I don't know how to really word my, my take on this, but yeah, if he's ready, he should be able to go. If not, they're not gonna take him anywhere. Right. You know, now that you've had this year in college, is there really is there kind of an added benefit that you found, you know, either on the court or even off the court, like in the classroom of experience in college? Yeah, definitely. I think being in the Big 12, being at OSU, um, I didn't want to hide anything. Like I chose the Big 12 because I thought I felt like it was the toughest conference in the country. Um 
I chose OSU because, you know, there was a lot of guys on the team that I already knew prior to getting here, but I feel like didn't really get as much respect as they should. Um, you know, a lot of people say, you know, why don't you choose Oklahoma State, da 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 And, you know, I, I, I accepted that challenge. Like, I didn't – I knew that, you know, them guys didn't have, you know, the respect that they deserve, but I wanted to take that challenge on with them. I knew how much attention I brought, um, and I wanted to show everybody what we could do together. So, uh, you know, there was a lot of different things that went into it, and I feel like, you know, that vulnerability of, of accepting the ups, accepting the downs, um, and trying to grow as a player and as a person. I feel like, you know, my team, all of us, I feel like we've all grown as people throughout this whole season, just with the ups and downs. And yeah, I feel like it's only made me a better player. So I feel like it's definitely prepared me for the next level and and just for basketball in the future in general. Thanks, Cade. Yeah. Well, we have time for uh, a couple quick follow-ups. Uh, Frank, do you have one? Go ahead. Yeah, Kay, I just want to go back to um, you saying you prefer road games. What is it about road games that that you like so much? I like I like hearing fans talk crazy. I'm not gonna lie, it just it fuels me a little bit. Um, just being in in you know the opposition's territory is just I don't know. It gives you like a, a extra adrenaline. Um, like I said, here here at OSU has been the first. Probably the first year of my career where home games has been something that I just look forward to. Like, I love, I love playing at home now, but I don't know. High school games, we didn't really have as many fans. At Montverde, we were we were killing people, so not a lot of people wanted to come out for those games. But, um, yeah, you know, the away games have always just been somewhere where I can go in. Uh, we usually have drawn big crowds, and, and you know, people want to see my best shot. And I feel like that extra adrenaline, all of that, you know, it's just, it's put more on the line and, you know, it's been more fun for me, for sure. Well, you experienced some heckling this season, you know, at Kansas TCU. So you, you embrace that. Yeah. I mean, every, every school, like that's, your fan base is weak if they're not trying to, you know, get into the other player's head. So, um, you know, I, if you're not trying to get in my head, then I almost take it as disrespect because you know what I'm saying? You should try to help your team in any way. So, um, yeah, I love it. I love it. I feel like it, it it brings that extra aspect that we're kind of missing because of COVID back, you know, and, and it only makes the game more fun for me. So I love it for sure. I appreciate you. Yeah. One last question from Marshall Scott. Go ahead, Marshall. Yeah, I've been meaning to ask you this all year, but what is your what does your course load look like? I'm always interested in what a what a one and done, you know, classes look like. Yeah, first semester, first semester was hectic. Uh, I had a bunch. You know, I actually, I got Red Cross certified this year. Um, so I'm certified to do CPR and all that stuff. I'm actually proud of that. I'm not going to lie. Uh, but, yeah, I took a bunch of, I took a couple of health classes um, first semester, um, leisure arts classes. Uh, I took a bunch of stuff first semester. I don't even remember. This, this semester right now, I'm in some assistive technology classes, some ed tech classes. Um, yeah, they got me in. That's one thing. It's you're, that line that they say we don't do class because, well, I mean, that academic center too much. I'm not gonna lie. So, uh, yeah, I might need to, I might need to get my, get ahead of my work. So I ain't gotta go in there so much, but yeah, it's been smooth for me. It's been smooth. Do you intend on ever coming back and getting your degree or is that something that you haven't really thought of much yet? Yeah, I, I want to get my degree. Um, I don't know how long it'll take me or anything like that, but I know my mom isn't playing about that, so I'll make sure I get it done for sure. Yeah, appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you, Cade. We uh, appreciate you joining us today, and uh, best of luck this weekend. Appreciate